Another great movement to learn to calm down our back pain is to learn how to move from our hips more efficiently. Because we sit so much, as we get tired, our body starts to slump, right? And we start to kind of bring our rib cage down towards our pelvis. And it gives us that roundness in our back, which eventually when we go to stand up, our back is weak. Uh, we, we have trouble getting into that position. Our front is tight. We have trouble stretching out of that position. Uh, so it's just common that as we fatigue from sitting for too long amounts of time that we start to get into the slump position. So what we want to learn to do is move from our hips instead. A great way to learn to do this is we're just going to use our hand. We're going to use our thumb and find the bottom of our sternum. And then whatever finger lines up with our belly button. For me, it happens to be my ring finger. Right? So I'm just going to kind of hold that position there. Now, as I go to move, if my hand gets shorter, if my thumb and my finger get closer together, that means I'm flexing at my spine. You can see how that slump position brings my hand closer together. If my hand gets wider, that means I'm extending at my spine as my hand opens up more. What I really wanted to learn though, is that my spine stays in a neutral position and I move from my hips. We call it a hip hinge, right? So when I go and I lean forward, my hand should stay in the same orientation. My hand should not get shorter or longer. Right? This means that I'm moving from my hips. It's purely where that hinge is coming from. As I get good at this position, and it might be a very subtle rock to begin with, you might only be able to do this a little bit, and as you get better at moving those hips and stabilizing that spine, you can move a little further. We eventually wanna be able to transition this from sit to stand. We go from sitting to standing and standing to sitting, I don't know, 100 times throughout the course of the day, a lot, right, without trying to practice it. So it's really important that we get good at that movement and do it the right way because if we're not doing it the right way, then it's an irritating movement. It's just reinforcing all those pains that we have and those deficiencies. So as I get efficient with this forward uh, hip hinge position, and it's important that we're in this neutral spine on the way back also, I eventually want to transition to where I'm standing up and all the way back down, right? Because if I can get good at hip hinging through my sit to stand, this is going to take a lot of load off of my back throughout the course of the day compared to if I'm doing inefficiently, right? After I get good at that, even from standing, what I want to work on is just that same hip hinging where I can bend forward and back up. Notice how my butt pushes back when I do this, right? If I start to bend at my spine, my hand gets small, right? So if I go to pick something up off the ground and my hand gets closer together, well, now I know I've made my back bend. And when I go to lift that object up, the first thing I have to do is now straighten my back out before I can generate power through my legs. Where if I can learn to push my butt back and keep that spine neutral. Now I'm in a good position, neutral spine, not painful. Legs are loaded and now I lift with my legs. This is what lifting with your legs, not with your back is. Everybody knows that we're supposed to do that, but nobody teaches anybody how to do it, right? We wanna keep that neutral spine. Line your thumb up at your sternum, whatever finger lines up with your belly button and learn to move in that position. If you can do that, then you move it from your hips. Your hips have big muscles, they're mobile, they're meant for movement. Your spine is meant for stability. It's meant to stay strong and transfer power from your legs to your upper body. Try that out. See how you do with those hip hinges.